The athletics director explained that the school is researching all avenues before a final decision is made. S Football Community is still struggling to come to terms with the fact that Simon Fraser University no longer has a college program. SFU President Joy Johnson announced on Tuesday that Burnaby Post Secondary School has decided to end its football program with immediate effect. Earlier this year, SFU said Texas-based Lone Star Conference had decided not to renew its partnership membership agreement with Red Leafs, and that upcoming scheduled season would be last, leaving school without a league to play from through 2024. They were part of the NCAA Division II competition, the second highest level of collegiate sports in the United States. Johnson said SFU will honor its athletic scholarship commitments for those who choose to stay and meet eligibility requirements for the 2023-24 school year. Spring camp over Christy Elliott played in SFU for four years, making history in the meantime by becoming first female player to play for a Canadian college football team and score a goal. After her game days ended, she became the director of football operations and recruitment for the program that gave her so much. Elliot said he and other staff were called into individual meetings Tuesday morning before a larger team meeting was held to break the news. She said yesterday's announcement surprised her, especially since Sho still had a year left at the Lone Star Conference before deal expired. We had a two-year contract, she told now. We thought we'd have at least one more season. So when we came to meeting, athletic director Teresa Hansen said that the program was terminated immediately. I think that's where real shock came from. Elliot added that many people have asked Hansen and management why they won't be able to play next season, but no concrete response or reason has been given. This ultimately left many players in danger, she. We learned after spring camp was over. There isn't much time for other players, like current players, to find a new school to go to, and the recruiting process takes a long time," Elliot explained. So now the players are not even sure if they can make it through a season, and for some players this is their last year. It's very difficult to transfer. University explored all roads in an interview. Hansen told now that numerous options are being considered, but none are viable. Hansen said SFU's athletics department began exploring other avenues after it was determined that the conference renewal deal would not be approved after the 2024 season. The landscape of Division II football has changed dramatically since we joined the NCAA, she explained. And recent years, there have been a number of Division II football schools that have stopped their programs in the conference and Division II that we played the Great Northwest Athletic Conference. In January of this year, the Lone Star Conference Council chairs brought Simon Fraser into another two-year partnership. So, at the time, with this announcement, we saw that by 2024 we had no room to play. We said, OK, we need to do a lot of research, we need to look at what options are presented us. Hansen said he's been in talks with the NCAA, NAIA, and U Sports, Canada's top collegiate sport. There was no opportunity to attend another conference within the NCAA. And being an independent Division II football school isn't a sustainable option for us in the short or long term, because we're going to have a hard time getting the games. It's going to be very difficult for the NCAA to really meet our requirements. He says they continue to talk to you sports, but as a div they know this. Two NCAA schools did not meet current charter for membership within the organization. It would be very complex to pursue an exemption for football alone, it's unprecedented, Hansen said. There's no way around it and something with absolutely no assurance that it will happen will cause more uncertainty for our athletes. There isn't single football school playing in a federation when all their athletic programs are in different union. So this becomes a very unprecedented, complex situation with absolutely no assurance. So with all this information, the university carefully considers everything and decided that at that time football was no longer a viable sport for the SFU. 
It doesn't even come close to our interests, former running back Mason Glover played about five seasons with the SFU, the last of which was last year. Glover said he did some coaching in spring and plans to join Red Leafs team in fall to help with back runs. In an interview with Now, Glover echoed similar comments from his former teammate Elliot. We felt like we saw it. At the meeting, basically told us they had exhausted all the options thought were viable, he explained. We had a whole schedule for next season, we were ready to travel and everything was ready. So we could play at least one more season. Glover added that the timing of the announcement, as well as implementation, was poor. None of the alumni, any of the student athletes were consulted about any decisions, he said. Absolutely everyone was affected by the decision. Not only SFU football players, but also high school students who were committed the program, which went against other proposals that they had to invest their future in SFU, now have go and find another home. Many teams have already closed their recruitment for the year. So this puts a group of people at risk. The fact that the school says it's in our best interest basically means they have no idea who they are talking to. This was not in our best interest at all. Petition filed to reverse the decision meanwhile, the SFU Football Alumni Association launched a petition to reverse the university's decision. When asked by now whether petition would have a significant chance of reinstating the program, Hansen said there was no opportunity to change decision. There are many layers, he explained. Some coaches no longer work here. Athletes. Several athletes are already in contact with other universities to advance both in new sports and on the transfer portal to other NCAA schools. You know, it's on the move and we did it so that athletes have the opportunity to do that right now. If it was later, they wouldn't be able to get into schools, they wouldn't be able to go, have the same chance.